Unfortunately, just recently, there was a day where I needed to send a sympathy card. It does happen as much as we don't like it. And when you're in that situation, having to start thinking about making a card is much more difficult. So having some sympathy cards to hand ready is always a good idea. Now these are three sympathy cards or thinking of you cards that you can make really quickly and easily without any stress. You can put really generic sentiments on them as well so you can personalize inside if you'd prefer. Um, so hopefully these will help you through if you need to do the same. I've got lots and lots of techniques in here so uh, I hope you like these and please do give me a thumbs up on the video and a subscribe if they've helped you. So the first card we're going to make is going to feature my uh, Textures Peacock Plume Feathers Stamps. So because there's three sizes of feathers on the stamp set, you can make this to suit your card size. I think I'm going to use this one here and create myself sort of a smaller card. Now I'm going to be using a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock and that's because I'd like the base to be the um, same colour as the like the front so I want it all to be the same color so I'm going to cut this down to let's make it um, four by six so I'm going to cut it down to four inches wide and then I'm going to score it at six inches and because this is 12 by 12 inch that should be the perfect size to be in half there so there I've got my card base now what I also like to do to make my cards look a little bit more professional but also because I'd like to have a vellum wrap on this one is to cut myself another panel that's going to sit on the front of this card base from the same color that's going to just sit ever so slightly smaller so I'm going to cut this one down to about three and three quarters in width and then because it was six inches, I'm going to cut it to five and three quarters in length. So before we do any sort of heat embossing and stamping, we need to make sure we use our anti-static pad all over our card base there. And then just ensure that your feather is going to fit on there nicely. I think that's a really nice size for this card. I'm going to pop that inside my stamping platform and place this on here. Now I'm going to keep this just to the left and turn it slightly. So it's quite nice in the center there. All right, okay. Now I use Wow Embossing Ink here, but I also like to use Versamark. I'm not too fussy with my embossing inks. Um, I've never found one that doesn't really do the correct job. Just look carefully. If you need to apply a bit more, then do so. Just making sure that I've got all that detail. There is so much beautiful detail within this stamp. You want to be sure to get it all. And that's the beauty of having a stamping platform like this. You can go over again and again and make sure everything's been caught. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to peel off my cardstock. Now I have got a short on YouTube that explains what I've done here within the stamping platform why I've got a sticky base to it so go and take a look at that at some point if you want to know why that is and I'm just going to sprinkle gold powder all over the feather now I get a lot of questions about these these are some little uh, silicone hands little clamp or grips that I got from craft stash they're actually by Ranger Tim Holtz um, and they are made for holding your embossing still. I will link them in the description below for you. So just heating my embossing now. There we go, and you can see all that beautiful detail of that stamp starting to come to life. Isn't that just wonderful? Now heat embossing was the first thing that drew me to paper crafts. I saw someone doing it in a demonstration and I was absolutely hypnotized by it. And to be honest, I still am every time I do it. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Now I'm going to do a little more heat embossing as well, but I'm going to do it this time onto vellum or parchment, you get the same effect. So I'm going to use the word sympathy that has come from my floral script words. These are the formal occasions words. They're not usually my sort of style of stamp, but um, these ones are just perfect for what we're doing today and they're certainly a great addition to the textures range because sometimes as I've said we just need to make these sorts of cards so 
So I'm just going to carefully place my vellum down and put my stamp over the top. Now I'm pretty sure I haven't actually used this stamp before. Now I'm going to stamp that leaving a little bit of an edge either side. So I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to fold it yet, but I have already applied my um, anti-static bag. It does stick to the vellum, so be very careful when you're lifting off your stamp the first time before it has any ink on it. And then I'm just going to add my clear ink, my gold powder and melt it in the same way as I just did before. Now it's always a little bit harder to see where you've stamped clear ink, especially on vellum, but if you hold it up to the light, hopefully you can just see that they're shining and you can see that you've got a nice perfect image. Now don't forget you can also heat emboss from underneath, you don't always have to heat from the top. It's actually quite nice like that because that follows the line of the feather there. So this is why I didn't trim the edges. I'm going to now fold these over just like so. And now I can just simply tear that at the back and that fits beautifully. So now all I need to do is adhere that onto the front of my card and maybe add a few little pearls scattered around. So there's our first finished sympathy card, nice and quick and easy to make and hopefully with items that you've already got in your craft stash. Now let's look at a second card. Now for this second card, I'm going to use a, a nice plum color as the base and I'm going to be using the Magnolia Leaf Half Tone Stamps. This set also comes with some dies as well, some outline dies for the leaves, but we're going to be concentrating on the stamps today and particularly just one stamp rather than all five shapes. So take your chosen leaf stamp and I recommend for this actually putting it onto a, um, an acrylic block that you can move around rather than a stamping platform this time. And you're going to want to find yourself an ink that is darker than your base colour. So first of all my card is 5 by 7 inches, this is a pre-made card base. So I'll pop that to the side and I'm going to be working onto the panel of cardstock that I've cut already down. Uh, leaving a bit of a border. Now, I like to just choose one corner to focus on here. Um, as my feather was sort of more this corner, I think I'll go for uh, this upper corner instead this time. And the first thing I'm going to do is stamp some of the darker leaves or leaves in the darker colour. Now, the beauty of the half tone leaf stamp is that it ha already has within it um like some gradient so some shading so it's not going to be a solid impression so it's nice and subtle so just pressing that down onto there so hopefully you can see the shading that we get there and you want to do this in a few different directions i've put down a blending mat underneath another one there and then i'm going to do one more just coming into the top corner there, just like so. And then I like to clean this up. And before you do the next stage, you want to ensure that your ink is fully, fully dry. So now we're pretty much going to repeat what we've just done, but with a clear embossing ink this time. And we're going to position our leaves kind of in the gaps of these ones. So I'll have one hanging down here between two purple ones. I have another one just in the corner here and try to kind of move the angle a little bit so they don't all look as if they are the same. I'll have a little one just here and you do want to try and also kind of overlap the leaves that we've already got as well a little where you can like so. So you can see the colour variation there, but now we're going to put our gold embossing powder all over these embossed ink leaves. Just a tip for you, if you do have your card base ready, that is perfect for capturing your excess powder because you've already got the fold in it. Now 
Now something that I like to do to fill in some gaps between leaves here is use some gold ink. This is Winsor & Newton ink. It's something that I've had since um, I was doing calligraphy and I just give it a good shape because there's a lot of mica in here that needs to be kind of mixed into the liquid and just tap my brush and this is the most stunning gold but concentrate on the areas around where you haven't got the gold leaves but still focusing on that top corner there and this this area where you've stamped now my sentiment is cut from my sentiments for all paper pack that is also linked down below because we have lots of different words for all occasions in both black and white so words just can't express i think is perfect sometimes you just don't know what to say when you're sending a sympathy card um so say exactly that uh, i'm sure the recipient would understand so that's going to sit onto the white card base and that's our second card this last sympathy card is inspired by two things it's inspired by the beautiful floral corner here that's inside the papercraft society box designed by phil martin sentimentally yours so i'm going to link this down below and it's also inspired by a color combination that i created during my distress oxide series looking at the rustic wilderness color just recently so again i'll link that video down below but also just up here if you fancy looking at some distress oxide blending too so i'm going to use this color combination and this stamp to create a beautiful card so first thing i'm going to do is use some low tack tape now although it's low tack tape i want to be really sure that i'm not going to get any um, peeling of the paper because when it's brand new it's still a little bit sticky so i'm going to pop it onto my clothes just before i put that down onto my cardstock so you can actually now see the panel that I've masked off a little bit clearer. So just a square in the middle. I am keeping everything to the top of this card and the base free there. So I'm going to do my blending. Now I'm going to start with the Rustic Wilderness colour, which is the darkest. And I'm going to blend this into the corner. Now for this card, unlike the previous two, I'm actually working directly onto the card base. Um, but it's up to you if you prefer to cut yourself a panel of white cardstock and work onto that and then trim it down to size you can do it that way so I'm going in first of all with the dark green um, I'll explain in a little while the reason for going in with the darkest color first then I'm going to go into the iced spruce and this is sort of a gray green so we're keeping with this oh, sort of neutral colors almost so just blending in small circles. Like I say, my Distress Oxide colour combination videos give you lots and lots of tips for ink blending as, long, as well as the um, colour combinations that you can use. So I'm now going back in with my Rustic Wilderness and blending that into the Iced Spruce. And then I'm going to take the Iced Spruce into Speckled Egg up in the top corner I'm going to take a little bit of water spritz it into my hand and just allow that to flick onto the surface there not too much because I want to use some water on this in a moment just enough to give it a kind of blotchy look there which I think I've done okay so now I can take away the low tack tape when you're peeling any sort of tape away from your cardstock if you fold your tape over so it's completely flat back onto itself and hold it at a 45 degree angle that way you're going to get the cleanest possible tape peel you can and it's least likely then to peel any of your paper away So I've got a few small areas around where I went over my tape because I wasn't watching what I was doing, I wasn't concentrating. It's probably in fact more water um, from where I added the water spritz rather than the ink. But we will cover that up later so stay tuned to the end for how I show you uh, how to kind of blend those in so you don't see them. So the next thing I need to do is stamp my floral. So this is a beautiful sort of lily corner, it's got a lot of detail in it. So putting this inside my stamping platform and making sure that I'm happy with the position 
of the florals there and picking that up. Now I have not used this stamp before so I'm going to take my pencil eraser and I'm just going to brush over the surface of the stamp to make sure that I get a really nice impression the first time I use it. And I'm going to use Versafine Clair ink. So this is a nice solid black ink, but this way I can apply more water to my project without making the ink bleed from this image. So stamping this all over. This is a nice new ink pad, so I shouldn't have to stamp it too many times, but I still go into my platform just in case I need to restamp the image at all. So a nice strong black image this time. There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that, just checking it all over, making sure I haven't got any missed detail. I don't think I have, so I'm going to put my ink pad away and I'm going to allow that to dry. Now you can speed that up by heating it with a heat tool. Before I come away from my stamping platform, I thought it wise to stamp my sentiment while I'm here, save me having to go back and stamp that later. The sentiment that I'm using is from an Adventures in Ink stamp set. Um, this one I believe is called Floral Simplicity and again I will link that down below. Once you're absolutely sure that your black ink has completely dried, you can take yourself a water brush filled with water or you can take yourself a small paint brush and dip it into some clean water and just brush over with the water the areas inside the flowers. So you only need to worry where your ink blending is. You don't need to worry about it anywhere else. And all this is going to do is lighten up that ink. So we're looking at the green here. And the more water you apply, and the more you do this, the more you're going to lift the ink. So I'm just giving that a moment to settle. Then I'm going to take my kitchen towel and lift that up and repeat that process a few times until I'm happy that I've lifted up a reasonable amount reasonable amount of the colour. See how that's lightened up just under the flowers a little so it's really made them stand out over the top of the ink blending. Um, so I'm also going to take a white gel pen and just add little highlights to areas of some of the petals. Now I'm not doing this to all of them, I'm just doing them like I say in little areas just to pick out some of the detail. You don't have to do this, it's completely optional but I really like this technique. Now, as I promised, um, just a way to hide, disguise some of those splats. If you just smooch a little bit of one of the colours that you've used onto a mat and spritz with water, you can take your pen or even your water pen that you've used and just flick some of that ink around so it looks like it was purposeful. So if you like this, please do check out some of my other videos as well. I've got lots of techniques in my card making playlist. And if you like the, dis the sound of the distress, oxide series you can check that out here too don't forget to subscribe everybody and i hope to see you again very soon